Today, we are back at Classic Auto Mall to feature this super rare 1971 AMC Hornet Super Coupe 360. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we dive in deep with specs and talk about things not often discussed on lost and forgotten classic cars. We feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that tend to get lost in the sauce. If that sounds like a channel that you would totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. We are going to be switching episode release time to late morning, early afternoon. My schedule got flipped around recently and this time window works best for the schedule. Just to fill you in, great news, this AMC Hornet SC360 is for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania. Super rare car, one of only 17 built with these options. 360 cubic inch displacement, V8, three speed, stick. If interested, click the link below after the show and see it for yourself. Let's talk 1971 AMC model lineup. These aren't in any particular order. Gremlin, Javelin, Matador, Ambassador. Then there was the Wagons. And then there was the Hornet. AMC would go on to revive the Hornet nameplate, which was used on Hudson cars from 1951 to 1954. The original Hudson Hornet was legendary contender on the racetrack as well as stock car circuits. So much so that when Disney and Pixar made the original Cars movie, they made it a point to feature the fabulous Hudson Hornet, Doc's character, in the Cars movie. Getting back to the AMC Hornet, AMC offered the Hornet from 1970 to 1977, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77. In 1971, the Hornet could be had as a two-door sedan, four-door sedan, and brand new for 1971 was the Sportabout, which was their station wagon offering. The Hornet line replaced the Rambler American line. Let's talk SC360. So there's a bit of conflicting information with what does the SC stand for? I saw that it could stand for supercar. I also saw that nine out of 10 people on the AMC forum that I went to to ask the question said that the SC stands for super coupe. But the funny thing is not haha -ha funny, but the peculiar thing is, is this is a sedan, not a coupe. But anyway, AMC was known for doing some weird things. What does the SC stand for in the comment section below? The SC360 was intended to be a follow-up for the 1969 SC Rambler. But the thing about the SC360 is it's very humble. It's very restrained, but don't let that fool you because this thing packs a punch. Let's talk specs. 179.26 inches long, 71.8 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 108 inches. It weighs, this is the curb weight, 3,108 pounds. Price, $2,663, which is equivalent to you spending $19,595.08, which is a bargain for this thing. Total... 1971 AMC production was 244,758 units, of which total Hornet production, now this is everything, this is all the sedans, this is everything, 112,653 units. And of that number, total SC360s was 784 units. Moving on to engines, 360 cubic inch displacement V8 was the only engine on offer, but it could be had in two different flavors. Now this is the base price. This is for the 19 grand equivalent, 360 cubic inch displacement V8, 5.9 liters. It makes 245 horsepower at 4,400 RPM, 365 pound-feet of torque at 2,600 RPM. When mated to a three-speed manual transmission, zero to 60 could be had in 6.6 .6 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 114 miles per hour. Does the quarter mile in 15.2 seconds and gets an average fuel economy rating of 11.6 miles to the gallon. Moving up to the second flavor, 360 Cubic inch displacement V8 with the Go Pack. Now we gotta stop and talk about what the Go Pack was. The Go Pack was a performance option offered by AMC, and it cost $199 for the Hornet, which is equivalent to you spending $1,464.30 in the year 2023. AMC also offered this option on the AMX, Javelin, 
and Matador machine. And what came in the package may have differed between cars, but for the Hornet SC360, the go package included a four barrel carburetor with ram induction, dual exhaust, handling package, tachometer, and polyglass raised white letter tires, which increased horsepower to 285 horsepower, 4,800 RPM, 390 pound-feet of torque at 3,200 RPM. When mated to a three-speed manual transmission, zero to 60 could be had in 5.6 seconds. That puts you up with almost all of the big boys. 109 miles per hour is the theoretical top speed, so it must have had a different rear end in it. It will do the quarter mile in 14.3 seconds, another impressive figure, and it will retain an average fuel economy rating of 10.4 miles to the gallon. Moving on to transmissions, three transmissions on offer, three-speed manual, four-speed Hurst GM Borg Warner Super T10, and the automatic. Some other options include Splicer Twin Grip, which was their limited slip differential. There was some final gear ratio options, 354 and 391. So let's come up here and talk styling. Look at how this is all textured. And notice it dips back in here and then comes back out. It's got a nice point here in the center. I also like how these fenders flare out. Look how this is designed. Comes out here and then back out. So, this is where the gas goes right there. So, coming up and getting inside, check out how this door handle is designed. It's very AMX like. Or this door has a frame around it. Let's talk about this door panel. This feels like painted steel, but it could be plastic. I'm not a material specialist. Down here feels like vinyl. Armrest, door handle, pull the door shut. This is the door handle to get out. This is toggle style, joy style mirror. Window crank for the big window. And notice it's curved. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, notice there's a little bit of a shelf here to store stuff. That's pretty cool. Emergency brake, emergency brake release, clutch, brake, gas pedal, high beam dimmer switch is just below, just behind this. You can't really see it. I'll move the camera down so you can, but there's the high beam dimmer switch. Take a look at this interior. Here's what over the hood impression looks like. Here's what first person looks like. Here's what under the steering wheel looks like. I wear size 34 pants. And the reason I show this is because if you're the same size as me, you'll fit in this car. If you're a little bit bigger, 36, 40, it might be a little bit more snug. On to the button switches and knobs, going from left to right, headlights, wipers, and wash feature. Three gauge pods sit directly in front of the driver, starting in the very first gauge on the left-hand side, gas gauge at the top, water temperature at the bottom, speedometer in the center with odometer at the bottom, and then the clock is on the right-hand side, weather eye, heat and ventilation controls, radio, lighter, and ashtray. Moving up here, sun visors. Here is the rear view mirror situation, daytime, nighttime feature for the passenger. Check out this steering wheel situation. The steering wheel is very reminiscent of something like a Amphicar has this same steering wheel, maybe a Henry J. It's interesting, it's a 1971 and it has this steering wheel design. Down here is where the ashtray is. It's also worth pointing out that this shelf continues the whole way down the car. So that's kind of cool actually. On to the glove box test. There's our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. And the glove box door release is right here. It's very interesting. But just look at how massive that glove box is. 
Look, and it fits inside. And it shuts. Who knew? Getting in the rear seat. I just wanted to show this because I was a bit curious. It doesn't fold all the way down like earlier AMC products do, which is kind of a bummer. I even moved the seat up as far as I could move it, just so you can see. I don't know, that is the weirdest seat lever that I've ever seen. But that is how much space you have to get back there. Also, look at where the seatbelt placement is. That's very interesting. So here is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a gander at the greenhouse. Just check out the pillars. It's got a nice rear shelf in the back and the back view looks like from the back seat. Got some coat hooks there. There's also a coat hook over there. Ashtray as well as armrest. These windows do open, but they don't roll down. They're, they're vent windows, they're hinged like that. Everything that's on the driver's side is also on the passenger side. Ashtray, windows are hinged. Here's what knee situation looks like. There's adequate space back here, but the seat is very upright and the cushion does dip down quite a bit in the back. This car does not have a center armrest in the back. This is what I look like in the rear seat. My head is starting to graze the top of the headliner. If I had my fro, it'd probably be a little bit claustrophobic back here, but it's very upright. I have a lot of space for my knees, but you're sitting very upright. Coming to the under the hood section, Here's the hood release right here, and that pops it. And there is a secondary catch, unless it's all in one. It's all in one, so you pull this down. See that mechanism there? Well, that's released. That's locked. That's released. And there's what the engine looks like. This car has Notice it has dual master cylinder, but non-power brakes, power steering. On to the pros and cons. We are getting all of these pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars, Blue Chip Auto Investments, 70 Years from 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the auto editors of Consumer Guide on the positive side. Performance and handling, low production appeal, fairly cheap to buy, and I'm going to add one of my own. It is the perfect sleeper car. Against it, difficult to find, thirsty unit body construction so rust is always a threat all right now it's time for name that tune first person to give me both the correct name of the band as well as song title first person to do both correct will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this rare car. I never even knew existed. Somebody requested this car when watching the Packard video because this car is parked right next to the 56 Packard executive. Thank you so much for this request. What an awesome lost and forgotten classic car this is. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. Second way is we have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you're interested, link will be in the description. So if I catch you on here or on Facebook, just know I appreciate everything. And until next time, toodaloo! So something to look forward to tomorrow, 1929 Hupmobile Century 6. We get to feature this rare, lost and forgotten classic car on tomorrow's episode. I hope you're as stoked as I am. Can't wait to see you there.